For this tutorial, I thought I'd show you how to use some of the basic shapes you find in Scan and Cut Canvas to create some um, rather complex designs. So we're going to start by entering Scan and Cut Canvas, or Canvas Workspace as it's now called, and loading up a couple of basic shapes. <clears throat> I'm going to take a circle first, and then this kite shape as well. don't think there's anything else I need just now. Right, we'll close down the pattern browser. We'll zoom in a bit. Not zoom out, John. Zoom in. There we go. OK, so I'm going to duplicate the circle by pressing the D key on my keyboard. Just zoom in a little bit more. Duplicate it again. And I'll open the properties dialog box and drag it off to the left. I'm now I'm going to type in some specific measurements for the circle. Okay, that's set my circle sizes. I'm now going to align them. So they're perfectly on top of each other. And then I'm going to use the process overlap subtract function to give me um, a ring or a donut shape. I'm going to duplicate that one and drag it down so it's overlapping the first one. And then select both, align them vertically, and then weld them together. Select and duplicate that shape. Hold down my shift key and left click on the mouse and rotate it so it's 90 degrees. And again, align them. And again, weld them. So you can see very quickly I've got something quite complex just from a basic circle. Duplicating again and then rotating it 45 degrees. And I'm just aligning at this stage just to see how that works. Now that's nice enough as it is. However, I want to resize the second copy of that design. So I'm going to enter the properties box and type in again specific measurement. And because that's thrown it out of alignment, I'm just going to realign it. Uh, yep, happy with that. So I'm going to weld that together. Looks good so far. I'm going to duplicate that circle again, bring it in roughly over the middle, and then just use the um, little handles on the corners of the circle to roughly resize it to where I think it's about right. And then I'm just going to round off those measurements to the nearest half. I'm going to duplicate that one and resize it. And then I'm going to align the first copy of the circle with my new shape and then weld them together. <clears throat> and then I'm aligning the second copy of the circle over the top. Send the main shape to the back, select both and then subtract. There we go, that's great so far. I'm going to enter the offset tool now though, and I'm going to change the offset to something quite small. I'm going to deselect that checkbox that says around the outside edge only. And that's now given me a shadow layer. Just going to drag the original off to one side while I work with this. Now I'll give this some colour on screen so I can see. Now you'll see that those central shapes are kind of filled in, but I want to edit this, so I'm going to use the divide function to split this up into individual bits. Now you can see they're now individually deletable. A quicker way to delete all of those inner bits is to select everything, unselect the outline by shifting and clicking, and then there you go, just press your delete key and they're all gone. Going to offset that again, this time just the outside edge, 
so that I get a shadow layer with everything blocked in. Send that to the back. Add some colour to the first shadow layer that I made. And then I can bring the original one to the front and give that some colour. Select all three. Align them. And press G on my keyboard to group them. Now I can resize them all together so they'll always fit perfectly. So there we go, just really quickly that's one design. Now I'm going to show you another one using this kite shape. So again, D for duplicate. And I'll set the uh, initial size. <clears throat> duplicate that one. Shift and click and rotate. Select both and align them and weld them together. Duplicate that shape, rotate, align, and weld. There we go. So, we've got a nice little cross shape. Now, what's next? Okay, so I'm going to select the shape. I'm going to use the offset tool to create um, an offset. I'll choose the bevel option this time because then the corners will be pretty much straight. I'll send that to the back because I want the smaller one on top when I use the subtract function. Duplicating the circle, roughly resizing it to fit over the center. Again, just rounding off the measurements. This is something that I do. You don't have to do this. You can just do it by eye if you prefer to. Then I'm aligning it. Duplicating the outside one. Rotating and aligning. I'm going to make the first one a bit bigger as well, actually. Okay, select them all and align them again. And I think I'm ready to weld. There we go. Now I've got some tiny little bits that won't cut well, so I'm going to go in and individually cut them out. So by double clicking on the shape, I enter the editing mode, a drag selection box and then using the minus tool will get rid of those very, very quickly for me. There we go, all done. Okay, looking good. I'm going to do an offset for this one. Again, a thinner outline, and I will do the inside bits as well. Okay. That looks okay, but I have noticed something. I zoom in all the way as close as I can get, you can see there's a little nooky nitchy bit that's going to cause problems, might even actually risk snapping my blade. So I'm going to individually edit out those points again.
Okay, I think that's all of them. There we go, nice and tidy. Just creating again the large shadow layer. Giving it some color. Now, you may have noticed that because I didn't do the thing before where I subtracted, I've got all these extra shapes that have just turned up out of nowhere. So a very simple solution is just delete them. Send the shadow to the back, give the second layer some colour. And again, because I haven't done my little trick of dividing and deleting, they're all still there. So I'm just doing that now. Bish bash bosh, done. Just bringing the original um, first layer back on and giving it some colour. Almost done now, just aligning those three together before I group them with the G key on my keyboard. And now again I can resize that to be whatever I need it to be. And there you go, you can see some very creative shapes there just from using the very simple basic shapes. It's a very similar process no matter what shape you're using. And I really hope that you'll get use of this somehow and some way. Obviously, feel free to tag me on my Facebook page or Twitter. Don't forget to give this project a thumbs up on YouTube. And also, please don't forget to share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more hints, tips and tutorials for the Brother Scan and Cut, or many other different types of arts and crafts, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check out the rest of my YouTube playlist. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.